What's up, Define Nation? And welcome to another episode of Define Your Health with Danielle Giordano. Strength through knowledge. And you guys know what a super plant-powered house I am. I am a vegan, as most of you know, and we definitely advocate a plant-based diet on the show here. Uh, I make the joke that you've never heard a doctor say, hey, you should eat some more ribeyes. Um, And we definitely have a special guest with us here today. We are very privileged to have Ms. Sharon Palmer, who is a registered dietitian. Her nickname is the Plant Powered Dietitian. And she is not only a nutrition expert, but she is a writer. She is an Uh, an editor. She's an author of two amazing books that are going to be in our $500 prize pack giveaway at the end of the show. So stay tuned for more details on that. And I just have to tell you, Sharon, thank you so much for joining us from Los Angeles today. And I'm, I'm excited about today's show. I'm happy to be here. You know, I, you know, one of the reasons why I really wanted to have you on and I wanted to, you know, have the conversation uh, w- with a voice outside of mine is just the popularity of plant-based diets. And that's really where I'd like to start, if, if you're good with that. I, you know, we see a lot of these trends that have come in and come out, and they typically have a pretty high spike and an equally, uh, you know, descent you know down and and they come in and they come out but plant-based diets are something that seems like it's been on a very steady track uh, as far as popularity and the benefits that are coming from that are are you seeing that as well too Sharon? I certainly am uh, and I agree with you you know there are a lot of diet trends and fads that come and go but as a nutrition expert I believe that the the trends that stick with us are the ones that prove out to be helpful. And a lot of the fads that come and go maybe just promote weight loss for a short period of time, but they're not really good for overall long-term health, you know. So I think the exciting thing about this plant-based diet uh, momentum is that this is something that um, it's linked with living longer. People who eat a plant-based diet live longer. They have lower risks of heart disease, cancer, diabetes. So this is, you know, really exciting from a health well, and, and you know, that's the thing is it's about longevity. And, and that's something that we try and stress not only here at the show, but Define Nation in general can probably tell you it. You know, we, we talk about wellness over weight. Um, and, and obviously, this is taking out morbidly obese uh, people who, who do need to obviously reduce their body composition drastically. That's a priority or lose pounds. But it's really about longevity and living, not just existing, and the difference between living and existing. And, you know, what I love about one of your books, The Plant Powered for Life, is you have these very simple, small steps, you know, and and, and sometimes it is just about taking those initial small steps, like Meatless Monday. It's just a matter of reduction at first. Your thoughts? Yes, I agree. Uh, you know, my whole philosophy is that uh, I would like everybody to eat a plant-based diet. Whether you're an, an omnivore or a vegetarian, of course, or a vegan, we can all eat a diet that's including more whole plant foods. And so these small steps, like for instance, this Monday, I'm a huge fan of this. Just a simple idea that um, just go vegetarian one day a week. And Monday, research shows that we like to have our healthiest behavior on Monday. Uh, you know, we like to start out the week fresh with our um, resolutions. So having this idea of every Monday being free, it can make a big difference. And then people can make changes even from there. Maybe they add another day a week or they realize how easy it is and they can move from there. So I'm a really big advocate of making these small changes. It's resonating with people because Meatless Monday is very popular. Well, and it's about behavior change. Uh, I mean, wouldn't you agree? I mean, really having a long-term, healthful, well life uh, really is about behavior change and lifestyle, not, and I, I just, I just detest the word diet, to be honest with you. It just implies something that's already short-term. Um, I think behavior change is, is a big part of it. Yeah, I, I agree so much with you. I don't like the word diet either. I think that um, signals to most people is something that they go on and off. And really, healthy eating and healthy living is really about a lifestyle of change, uh, 
a thing, and it has to be something sustainable, something that you can do every day. It can't be crazy. You know, it has to be something that you feel good about, that's delicious, and makes you feel better. Well, and, and, you know, you see this snowball effect, or at least I have in my experience, where you start to make these small changes, and then all of a sudden, you know, you, you have two changes that become ten, and then you start thinking about things like, you know, the environment. Then you start thinking about things like what type of cleaners are you using in your house. It, it just it becomes this snowball that you start taking care of you with these very small steps, and it snowballs into this overall, let's take care of the entire life, the entire family. Um, and I just think that's awesome when you see somebody go through that, that change, that modification that, you know, it, from where they were to what seems like almost a completely different person, uh, you know, maybe a, a year, two, three years later. Yeah, I've seen that a lot in my work where, you know, I've, talk to people who are living on fast food and they make these changes and they and within a year time they're completely turned around their health, you know, have gotten off medications for diabetes and high cholesterol and so many things and living, you know, with a, a, such a high quality life. But, you know, it has to start somewhere and I think this this concept of eating more whole plant foods I, I think everybody can get behind that. You know, even the most diehard carnivore could just start eating more plants, like cutting back, just starting at that one place and work. Absolutely. And you know what? I'd like to go into a couple of tips as soon as we get back from this break. And remember, Define Nation, this segment brought to you by Soy Joy. Natural snack bars. Soy Joy helps fuel your day, so grab some today. Delicious energy is waiting at ussoyjoy.com. That's us.soyjoy.com. Hey, Define Nation. This is Danielle from the Define Your Health Strength Through Knowledge radio show. And when I chose the gear I would use during the Highway for Health cycling project, I chose only the best. And that meant I chose Primal for my cycling apparel. Their quality is simply unmatched by anyone in the industry. And the creative design geniuses are innovative engineers. For your next team event or local riding group jerseys, check out my Primal friends at PrimalWear.com. That's P-R-I-M-A-L-Wear.com. Have you been with the same insurance provider for several years? If you have, you are probably paying too much for your auto and home insurance. Hi, this is Mike Monzingo with Texas Independent Insurance. If you have been with the same provider for several years, there is a good chance we could substantially lower your insurance cost without sacrificing coverages. A report from the Texas Office of Public Insurance Council estimates that a person who has been with the same insurer for eight years would save an average of 18% on premiums by switching providers. We provide coverage from several of the top-rated insurance companies, and we review your rates at renewal to keep your premium as low as possible. Give us a call today at 972-612-2393, and let us prove to you that switching insurance carriers translates into great insurance rates. As I always say, if you don't know insurance, know your agent. Mike Monzingo, Texas Independent Insurance, 972-612-2393. And we are back to Fine Nation with our special guest, Sharon Palmer, who is a registered dietitian and the plant-powered dietitian, as she is called. And we are talking about the popularity of plant-based meals, plant-based diets, a plant-based lifestyle. And, you know, I, I just, I have to tell you, Sharon, I really want to get into a little bit of the, no pun intended, the, the meatless uh, and potatoes uh, dinner uh, tips. How about that? <laughs> and and just really talk about you know we we ended the last segment really saying that there's long term benefit. It is much easier than most people may think to make these small steps, and then it really starts this evolution of the person. And so you know what do you see as some of the easiest steps? Uh, since you literally wrote the book on it, um, what do you see as some of the easiest steps that people can start to incorporate today, this week? Yeah, well, one of my favorite steps is 
to look around at what our cultures are doing, and, you know, most cultures around the world eat plant-based diet. They eat small amounts of uh, animal foods than we do in the United States. In fact, we eat about three times the global, a- global average of animal foods. So that what they're doing is they're just using small amounts to flavor a whole dish. So, for instance, if you're making one small change you can make, is to use one small portion of chicken for an entire stir fry. And then you know, you're in, uh, in addition to that, you're just piling on the veggies. So, you know, that, that's one way, one of my favorite tips. And another one of my favorite tips is to just look at your favorite uh, classic dishes that your family loves. It could be spaghetti, it could be lasagna or taco night. And just make those plant-based. You know, turn your um, meat lasagna into a veggie lasagna. Turn your tacos into bean tacos. Um, and turn your spaghetti into uh, like a white bean spaghetti or something like that. So you're just taking those classic dishes and turning them plant-based so it's not so different. Well, yeah, and you know, when you look at so many different options that are out there too, and that's really what I have been impressed with when you talk about this evolution and people making the small steps um, is the types of meatless options that are not there, the way that they have drastically improved, um, you know, over the last several years with taste and texture and things of that nature. Um, and, and for those who aren't ready to make that leap, like you said, you know, using that small amount of chicken and really, you know, getting those vegetables in there and just letting your body feel the benefits of having all those micronutrients and macronutrients and just having everything be absorbed. And that brings up, I, I'd like to talk about soy protein, uh, just for just for a couple of moments, if you don't mind. Can you give, in, in your opinion, what are the true benefits, uh, particularly of, of soy? I have soy in my diet every day, whether it's tofu or soy milk or um, just cooked soybeans, soy nuts, those are some of my favorite foods. But uh, soy is a very nutritious food. It's been a, a huge part of the diets in Asia for centuries. And in, um, in fact, in Japan, people eat tofu every day, and they have a very high longevity rate. So, you know, there are many benefits. It's this legume that's uh, what I call, you know, a, has an amazing protein package because along with that protein, high-quality protein, you get all this fiber, and it has phytochemicals that have been linked with health properties. So, um, you know, studies, a number of studies have been done on soy, and it appears to have heart health benefits. It's, again, high in fiber, and it's been linked with um, the satiety, the feeling of, of satisfaction, of feeling full cool after you eat so that you uh, can be less later on. Um, and I also like the fact that it's very sustainable. You know, you can grow soy um, for uh, food use, tofu or soybeans or um, full meat, uh, meat analog, and it, uh, you can grow it at a much more um, sustainable weight than you could animals for the same animal protein. You get that same amount of protein because it, it uses less water, less input, and you get so much more out of the crop. Well, and it seems like, again, that's that, that um, evolution that people have where we start here and then all of a sudden it's about, you know, caring about things like the environment that, that starts to come into play, things that maybe people have never thought about before. Uh, and then once they become educated, then the importance rises to the surface and, and becomes a, a priority. Yeah, I agree. And uh, that's one of the main reasons people are interested in plant-based diets is because of sustainability. I think, you know, as we work on our health, like you mentioned, then we become more interested in other aspects of our lifestyle. And the way we eat makes a huge impact on um, our carbon footprint. Um, the environmental impact on the planet and eating more plant foods is definitely easier on the environment than eating uh, more animal foods. So, you know, I have to ask you this. So, what is your favorite dish using soy? Before we go to commercial break, I have to know. <laughs> well, I love tofu and I mean, I have lots of recipes on, on tofu in my book, but you know, sometimes just a simple tofu curry or a tofu stir fry is my go-to comfort food dish. But I also have, like, I, I use tofu in desserts. Um, my mom oh. used to have a, cl- a classic uh, peanut butter pie. She's from the South. And I took her old recipe and I made it into a tofu peanut butter pie. And I swear you could serve it at any any 
party, and people would think it's an old-fashioned peanut butter pie, but it's completely dairy-free. It's, um, it's got tofu in it. All right, we are going to cut away to a quick commercial break. Remember, Define Nation, this segment brought to you by Trafossi, the leader in technically advanced eyewear for the sports enthusiast. Visit them today at trafossioptics.com. That's T-I-F-O-S-I-O-P-T-I-C-S dot com. Hey, Defy Nation, this is Danielle, and when I'm out logging the mouths on my bike, eye protection is key. Whether it's thorn grass in New Mexico or the Texas sun pounding down, I trust my vision to Trafossi Optics. Trafossi not only offers superior protection from Mother Nature, but true comfort in their design. Top it off with high-performance style, and you can understand why they have been my only eyewear choice since participating in competitive cycling. Check out their full line of eyewear, including golf, tactical shooting, and water sports at trafossioptics.com. That's T-I-F-O-S-I-O-P-T-I-C-S dot com. Hello, I'm Marie Lascarillas, founder and president of the Alzheimer's Cure Foundation. Our mission and vision is to dramatically accelerate the cure for this devastating disease by raising and awarding a $20 million cash prize that will serve as the gold medal for the scientists or team of scientists to discover the cure. We need everyone's help. We need all donations, big and small. Our website is www.alz, as in zebra, c as in charlie, u-r-e, dot org. You can donate through our website. You can also call me at area code 401-473-7019. We need your help. All donations, big and small. And we are back, Define Nation, and we are talking plant-based protein with the plant-powered dietitian, uh, author, expert, writer, editor, very well-respected uh, in her field. Cheryl Palmer joins us all the way from Los Angeles, California. And, you know, I really want to address something here because my personal opinion is there has been a lot of misconceptions about soy. And I know that's kind of where our discussion kind of took us is, is, is in the soy realm. Um, you know, you know, obviously there is other plant-based proteins, but that's kind of where we went. And so I want to come back to that um, because I do think that there are some misconceptions and I think there's a lot of confusion around soy. Is it good? Is it bad? Well, well, this is good. Well, that's bad. And, 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 and it's a lot of, it's marketing directors do what they do. I mean, and, I, and I've said that a hundred times on the show. It's, you know, people need to have the knowledge for themselves. So I'm really going to turn the ball over to you here. What is your opinion? Do you think there are misconceptions? What? Take it away, Sharon. What do you think? Yes, I do think there are a lot of misconceptions. And I think it's really unfair because people are excluding soy for uh, no reason. And it's a helpful food that actually has benefits, you know. So uh, I think one of the most common fears uh, or misconceptions surrounding soy is breast cancer. People think that it gives them breast cancer. But actually, that theory has been disproven. Um, both the American Institute for Cancer Research and the American Cancer Society now have statements that soy is safe. Even if you had breast cancer at one time, it's still safe for you as long as you're having it in moderate amounts, and that's like serving the day, maybe even three, you know. So, of course, anything when you're overdoing it, it could be something that uh, might have some harmful outcome. But this modern amount, like people would normally consume, is safe. And I, what I like to point to is how in um, many Asian cultures have been eating soy for centuries, and, you know, they have lower rates of breast cancer risk than we do. So, exactly, um, exactly. And, I, and, I, and I'm sorry if I stop you for just a moment. You know, I'm a big, anybody who knows me knows I'm a big history buff. And I just, I say, well, let's look. You know, what has history taught us? What evidence is there? And, you know, going to that Asian culture is, you know, I mean, that's, they're the go-to. They do have very long longevity rates. Um, and, and they're active. And, and truly, again, they live. They don't just exist into their old age. Yeah, 
So I, I, I just can't help but agree with you 100% on that point. Yeah, and I, th- I think sometimes that's uh, more meaningful to people when you realize that this is a part of a daily habit in certain countries. And it's part of the, the traditional Japanese diet, for example, which has been researched, and we found that they, the diet is linked with um, better health, longer life, and this is a daily part of the diet. Another thing to consider is now we have a body of research on vegetarians. And vegetarians have been eating soy for a long, long time. And vegetarians longer than, than the average population, you know, when, according to some of the studies we have now. So we have this research that's showing us that it's safe. Um, so the science is there showing it's safe. So now it's like getting beyond. It's, now it's just a hype. Um, a lot of websites and reports you might read, they're not based on science. So I like to get it back to the science um, where we know what, what, you know, the facts that we know about soy. And it's really a shame to exclude some things in their diet that's so helpful. Well, and, and I can't agree with you more. And I, and I think that science does speak volumes. And I think generations of people and their health speak volumes. Um, and I think it speaks much louder than, than any commercial or any misconception or, or misguided uh, information that may be out there. And then, and again, I, you know, I'm going to kind of round ball up. We talked about it a little bit in the last segment, but just the, the, the quality, the, the high quality of the protein. Um, you know, you, you bring in the eco-friendliness. I mean, you, you talked about the, just the water alone. Uh, you know, and just the point of the water usage alone, I think, is an extremely valued point. Um, you know, the amount of fiber that's in there and, and the benefits for the heart. I, um, yeah, I just, uh, <laughs> I, I love soy. <laughs> I know. Well, it's one of my most favorite yeah. things, by the way, too, along with, and I know this is my shameless plug for them, but soy joy. I love soy joy bars. Do you love soy joy bars? I love soy joy bars. <laughs> I do, too. You know, and I was going to say um, another way that you can enjoy soy is in snack foods, um, like soy nuts or even something like a whole food bar, like you just mentioned, soy joy bars, because they have whole soy. And I like formulations where you're getting um, real ingredients, like real fruit, and um, those bars have that as well. So that's another way you can get soy in your diet, too. Yeah, and it's, again, going back to the taste as well. Um, you know, I mean, just talking about the soldier bars, I mean, the flavors that they have, it's so easy to give it to a kid. I mean, it's, it's so easy to get those nutritional dense ingredients in. Um, and then you're creating a behavior pattern and, and, and a behavior change, maybe in some cases for kids. You, you know, I'm very passionate about childhood obesity with the whole Highway for Health program uh, or project, excuse me. And so I think it's important um, to get it in with kids early and develop those habits early. Do, do you have an opinion on that? I agree so, so much with that. Um, you know, we're all concerned in the health community about childhood obesity. And, you know, we have all this research that shows that it starts at the beginning. It starts even with parent modeling. What parents eat in front of their kids mm-hmm. um, will Im- impact what kids choose. Absolutely. And it's, you know, one of the... Simplest things you can do to um, create a, a healthful home is to only put healthful foods in your kitchen. If you're putting all these things in there, healthy snacks, um, you know, fruits and vegetables, a lot of whole plant foods. If that's what the kids will find, then that's what they'll eat because there's nothing else to eat and they're hungry. So having these foods around, um, it's just so important to constantly have them available for the, the entire family especially for the children. Well, okay, so we're talking kids here. So tell me, you tell me, because you are the expert. Okay, pizza, tacos, burritos. Tell me, how do we make them healthy? Give me, give me, give, give me something. Give our listeners something that they can make some healthy burritos or healthy tacos or, or whatever may be there. Well, that's a great uh, um, comment there because I think, a lot of people think that healthy eating is too hard, too difficult, unattainable, and a lot of people really don't know how to cook very well. So some of these things can be so easy, like some tacos. I mean, our family has taco night once a week, and it, our whole family loves it, and it's so easy. You can get up the table, you know, in 20 minutes. Uh, just starting with whole grain tortillas, that's a healthy um, carbohydrate source. 
um, having black beans uh, instead of the ground beef. If you like the taco, I like the taco crumbles, the the, um, the faux meat taco crumbles that are made from soy. Um, so that kind of gives you a, a little extra a additive, you know, corn, salsas, all the different kinds of veggies that people like, tomatoes, green onions, um, avocado. And then it's like a build your own taco night. It's very easy. Everybody loves it. And it's healthy. And the same thing, um, I have a pizza recipe in my, uh, in my book that starts with a whole grain crust. And you can find a whole grain crust just about everywhere now. And then um, it's just covered with veggies, you know, starting with a marinara sauce. And it has uh, broccoli, cashews, um, green onions, even um, curry powder for some exotic spice. But I think pizza night is another fun night for your family. You can make a plant-based pizza and just pile it with veggies. Um, well, so it doesn't have to mean that you have to exclude these foods. Well, and I'm guessing that are those two recipes found in uh, Plant Powered for Life, uh, eating your way to a lasting, uh, eating your way to lasting health, excuse me, 52 simple steps and 125 recipes. Is that, are those two in there? Well, what the pizza recipes in my first book, uh, well, I have two pizza recipes. So you, the, my latest book, Plant Powered for Life, does have a pizza recipe and it also has taco recipes. So well, and I love the fine. title of that second book as well, too. Uh, the Lifelong Eating Plan for Achieving Health, beginning today. I, uh, I, I love that title. I just have to tell you. And what is your website that people can uh, check those out and check you out some more, Sharon? Well, it's my name, SharonPalmer.com. That's S-H-A-R-O-N-P-A-L-M-E-R.com. And I have a blog that I, I post recipes, tips for eating a plant-based diet. Um, I do interviews, um, all sorts of fun stuff on my blog, and you'll find recipes and more information on my books there as well. Well, awesome. Well, and I cannot thank you enough for coming on today and helping Define Nation be more educated and be more empowered by knowledge because knowledge is power and I do believe that and you know what we're going to do Sharon for our prize pack this week what's that we actually have an entire prize pack that's nothing but soy goodness from our friends at soy joy plus I do believe you're thrown in both of your books right I am oh well look at that and Defy Nation remember that you will be able to Get your hands on that awesome prize pack. If you have the correct answer from our trivia question from this show today that will be posted on our social media site. So I'm pretty excited about that, Sharon. And we want to thank our friends at Soy Joy. And I am just, I'm excited about knowledge. This has been an awesome show, Sharon. I hope to, uh, maybe we can come on, uh, maybe you can come on again and we can uh, do this one more time. Get into some more recipes. I would love that. Thank you so much for having me today. Absolutely. And you know, you can meet me at the Santa Monica Pier for the Highway for Health Project. You know, that, that's where I'm going to end. <laughs> I would love to do that. That would be awesome. We'll get a picture with our Soy Joy Bars. It'll be awesome. <laughs> it will be. All right, Define Nation. Remember, motivated, dedicated, and highly recommended. Bye-bye.